Welcome to Nonprofits and Support Groups with Papa B on The Voice at Access Sacramento. The purpose of this show is not to enter into any controversies or this program is better than that program or this nonprofit does this. or It's just to get information out to the local community about what's available in the area. Throughout my recovery, I've heard people say, well, how did you find out about that group? And uh, I thought I'd put this show together to help explain some of the nonprofits and support groups that I'm aware of. And if you'd like to add any, please feel free to write me at papab2010 at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to talk with you a little bit and see if we can put something together. So with this show, I'm going to play a little bit of music and mostly interviews of uh, nonprofits and let them explain what their nonprofit is all about and how it works. Today I'll be interviewing Dr. Jeff Harden with Insight World Aid. I hope you enjoy this show and gain a new insight into this wonderful nonprofit. I would ask that you please have your pen and paper ready to take down some vital information that Dr. Harden will pass out in regards to his contact information and how you could find further information on this nonprofit organization on the website. Um, on that website too, of course, there'll be a place where you can donate financially if you cannot uh, donate, you know, your time or other efforts. So here we go with my interview with Dr. Jeff Harnden. Today I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Jeff Harnden with Insight World Aid, and here with me is Dr. Jeff Harnden. How are you today, Jeff? Oh, very well. Thank you. Thank you for Good. having me on your show today. Good. What is Insight World Aid? Well, uh, we're a nonprofit that was started uh, about two years ago, and um, what our main goal is is to bring uh, resources to communities and individuals in need, uh, both here in uh, the U.S. and specifically in Northern California, and also internationally. And this really is coming out of um, a specific community here in Northern California, and that's the Insight Meditation Community. This is a, a mindfulness-based community that really stems from uh, American branch of Buddhism, and uh, we've uh, kind of organized ourselves over the last couple of years to uh, bring some resources to people in need, and to do it in a way that's, um, I guess we should say, non. Um, we're really non-denominational. We're not out there preaching any religion or, you know, foisting our meditation techniques <laughs> on, on to people. But uh, you know, we recognize there's quite a need in, in very many, very many different communities throughout uh, this country and in the world. 
What is the population that Insight World Aid is looking to service? And by that I mean, is it local community? Is it um, low income? Is it little villages somewhere? Or um, who do you hope to help with this nonprofit? Yeah, well, we're we're starting out small. Um, you know, we've just organized and we've gotten our. 501c3 status and we're collecting donations and we're uh, putting volunteers to work in various aspects of our um, organization but you know we're really trying not to overstep our boundaries there's a lot of uh, wonderful you know very large organizations both governmental and non-governmental organizations throughout the world that are helping out different communities um, but we, we thought what we would start with is uh, two main areas, um, one domestic and one international. So domestic, we've been uh, volunteering with um, uh, different types of um, homeless and low-income health fairs and wellness fairs. So our volunteers will go out to these health fairs and, and you know, see people um, provide medical services, other sorts of social services. And then international, what we're focusing on is we're putting together a, um, a medical mission to go to Cambodia. We've chosen Cambodia, which is a country that historically has you know, really suffered quite a lot over the last several decades. There's been, you know, there was a genocide there in the, in the 70s and you know, years of civil war after that. And the country's just getting back on its feet and the, the health care conditions there are, are uh, some of the worst in the region. So we have some ties there, and I've, I myself have been there twice in the last two years doing some scouting and arranging and, and some medical work to bring over a team of our doctors and nurses and, you know, and, and non-medical people to help out um, a small village in Cambodia. That's great. What are the future aspirations of Insight World Aid? Where do you see it heading, or where would you like it to be in the future? Yeah, well, um, really, the you, you know, maybe the question uh, preceding that would be, uh, you know, why would we, <laughs> you know, basically start this organization? In some ways, um, you might think we're recreating the wheel. I mean, there's these, these huge organizations, both uh, Christian organizations, um, some Jewish organizations, Muslim organizations, and, and non-denominal organizations that bring aid to uh, both places in this country and places ab um, abroad. Um, so the question, you know, might be, you know, why did, why did <laughs> this small uh, group of uh, meditators, and it's really not a small group, we have, you know, a lot of branches throughout uh, this country in, in, in Europe and, and in Asia, but um, it started with just a few individuals. You know, why would we start an organization to bring aid? And really what, um, you know, kind of the theory behind us starting this organization was uh, we wanted to have um, basically a place where people who um, are meditators, uh, people who you know maybe consider themselves Buddhist or not, um, but in this community have a um, you know basically an outlet to put to practice a lot of the principles that you know we learn about, we study, and we practice in the, in the meditation process. You know the meditation process, mindfulness, we see as a way of calming the mind, of really, you know, understanding all of our thoughts and emotions and, you know, our actions in the world and taking accountability for them and, you know, li living a life where we're not harming, where we're helpful to others and that we're, you know, mindful, which another word for mindfulness is awareness or, you know, being awake and, you know, being really connected with um, our lives and, you know, the lives of others. So we wanted um, to approach uh, helping others and working uh, in aid, the aid area uh, from this, this point of view. Um, so that's why we um, started this organization. <coughs> now, the, the question that you asked, <laughs> what is, where do you see it going? And from that humble beginnings, you know, I would really like to see um, us to um, you know, start these missions abroad, for example, and then uh, expand them, you know, and have regular health um, expeditions or missions to different countries, starting in Cambodia. We're also looking at Burma and South Africa. And eventually I'd like to see us establish some clinics that are staffed by local um, health care providers uh, in these uh, various 
areas of need and that we would support these clinics, we'd have our volunteers uh, come and help staff them, but they'd really be uh, run by indigenous people, by, you know, by the, the uh, people who live there and you know, who, who know their culture and their community best. Um, locally, I would like to see um, uh, our group continue to expand, to uh, participate, participate more in health fairs, you know, perhaps run some of our own. You know, we've talked about things like opening a food pantry, um, or having you know some assistance um, for people who need transportation um, or meals on wheels. There's a lot of different areas we're looking at currently, but um, you know we'd like to eventually get to the point where we have a, a quite a battery of volunteers helping out and we're you know servicing several communities. Right now, um, most of our local work has been in the Sacramento area and in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, and in fact our headquarters uh, for Insight World Aid is uh, technically in Redwood City in the San Francisco Bay Area, but a lot of the operations are conducted from uh, here, from Sacramento. It's a great segue for my next question. I was going to ask you how do uh, individuals in the local area get involved with Insight World Aid? Is there a particular do you have to be a meditator? Do you have to be a Buddhist? Um, what kind of volunteer um, would you be looking for? What kind of financial aid would you be looking for? Financial assistance? Yeah, we have, um, you know, at this point what we're doing, uh, spending a lot of our efforts on is building the infrastructure. We've uh, recently formed some volunteer action teams. These are in basically four areas of need in our, our budding organization. Uh, one of them is the international team, which is looking at, you know, how can we bring over teams of uh, people to work and help out, um, specifically in Cambodia, but also in other areas down the line, and to do this in a way that is uh, well thought out and well planned and not uh, kind of just blunder forward and <laughs> create a lot of uh, uh, problems for the people we're, you know, supposedly trying to help. So that's one of our teams. Another one is a local action team, which is basically carrying on that same work um, locally and how we can participate in these health and wellness fairs and how we can get involved with other organizations that have some uh, capacity that needs building. Uh, then we have a communications team that is working at um, basically uh, getting the word out about our organization, managing our website, our email newsletters, um, you know, all of the kind of day-to-day -day, um, work of communications that a new organization or any organization needs to have. And then our final team is our financial uh, volunteer team. And this team consists of, you know, keeping track of our books, um, also fundraising and uh, grant research and, and writing. So we uh, are looking for individuals uh, to get involved in um, any or all of those teams. We also accept donations. We have a website um, that has a you know PayPal button on it. We also uh, accept donations um, at uh, the uh, um, our main office, which is in Redwood City, um, and you can find the address for that uh, on our website. Which our website address is InsightWorldAid.org. That's uh, spelled I N S I G. H T W O R L D A I D dot O R G Insight World Aid dot org. And on that website, there's uh, explains how to get involved in the uh, volunteer teams um, and also how to donate. Um, also, you can um, help out our organization by just spreading the word, and, you know, like this radio program. I've really appreciate it to get the word out there about our work. Um, and one of, the, one of the aspect of your question was, do you have to be of any certain, um, I don't know, philosophical or religious background? And, and that, not at all. We, we uh, accept uh, people of any uh, background. Um, you know, really our orientation is one of the mindfulness that is to uh, approach um, all of our activities in life mindfully, you know, and not uh, create um, further problems or, you know, just approach helping others recklessly, but to do it, you know, in a, in a way that's balanced, um, that's uh, appropriate for the situation. 
that's uh, compassionate and, and wise. That's that's really our our motto. So we don't have any uh, restrictions. You know, we're we're very inclusive, um, and we're you know very appreciative for whatever help that we can get to uh, further our cause. Sounds like a great project. Uh, yesterday I was listening to the local TV channel, and they were talking about their. Uh, medical drive that they were having where they were providing medical services to low income and I heard of a lady that was getting her dental care through there and it was the only uh, option she had for dental work and it was really really touching to me to see that would you have any stories similar to that or that you could share with the audience on how your uh, program touches people's lives or if you've had any uh, individual experience where um, Insight World Aid or your being a doctor has assisted others in, um, in their health care? Uh, yes, actually two stories come to mind. Thank, thank you for asking that. Um, actually we were, uh, Insight World Aid was at that uh, um, Cal Expo uh, medical health fair over the weekend and I was working myself uh, yesterday um, in the medical part of that um, they call it a medical expedition, but basically it's a health fair. They did dental and vision and, and medical. And um, I was seeing a patient there, uh, uh, a young woman who um, had quite a few kids at home. She didn't have a job, you know, really struggling. Um, she had uh, basically hadn't eaten in two days. Um, you know, she was really um, saving all of her food for her um, children. And you know, really wasn't able to take care of herself in this in this uh, situation. And you know, she, like many people in this economy and in this our current health care crisis, had fallen through the cracks. She uh, wasn't currently in any uh, assistance program like uh, Medicaid is a uh, one program that you know provides assistance for people with low income or no income. And she didn't have these services. She had diabetes and high blood pressure and you know a number of, of um, conditions that were basically being untreated and couldn't afford the medications and um, you know there wasn't a whole lot we could do for her the bigger picture for her but you know in that moment uh, just stopping to be uh, kind to her listening to her you know I, I did uh, give her a prescription for some medications you know gave her some counseling on how to take care of herself uh, and her specifically her diabetes and her blood pressure better um, you know and just kind of listen to her um, her troubles you know and this this very difficult life that she's found herself in you know I, I for me this is what you know really inspires me to do this work is that that one-on-one -on -one connection um, similar situation happened uh, last year in Cambodia. I was there uh, participating in a, a medical uh, mission in, in Cambodia in a small village and I had another uh, patient, uh, very similar, a, a young single mother um, who was working long hours. She was um, you know, trying to take care of her two kids in this case. and. Um, you know, her health had also, you know, really paid the price, you know, of years of trying to um, make ends meet um, in a very difficult environment. You know, one could argue in, in many cases in, in that this is uh, much uh, more of a struggle to survive in Cambodia than it is in, in America. But um, I was there seeing her and um, listening to her. Uh, difficulties and her struggles through a translator. Um, she didn't have any, you know, major life-threatening health issues at that time, but she was you know, suffering a lot from chronic pain and you know, fatigue, and she had uh, depression, and I, I imagine also post-traumatic stress disorder, as a lot of people in that society do. And um, after listening to her for a while, and you know, I also gave her some prescriptions, some medication. Um, she was gathering up her kids and her stuff and she you know was started to walk away you know, without saying a word and that, that was fine but then she kind of caught herself and she stopped and tears almost welled up in her eyes and she looked at me and said something in Cambodian I don't speak Cambodian so I didn't understand uh, but the translator who was there um, translated it as she said you know it's no one's really stopped to listen to, to me um, ever that I can recall, you know, the, and, and things are just so 
hectic in my life. You know, I, I really appreciate you know what you're doing here, and I, I I got the sense it was you as in the whole our whole group. You know, because we really come there to help that village out, and um, you know had a lot of these um, personal interactions like this. And that, that just really touched my heart, you know, that um, this woman, you know, that she would stop like that and, and acknowledge, you know, that there was some, you know, exchange or that there was some value to what we were doing there. So it's, it's stories like that that really, you know, keep me going and inspire me to do this work and to have a lot of hope, you know, for uh, what benefit our organization can provide and, you know, maybe on a grander scale, the hope for the human species to... Um, together work our way out of this uh, mess that we've gotten ourselves into. That's great. That's really a touching story. It's a beautiful story. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, would you have any final words or anything else you'd like to add about Insight World Aid that our listeners should know or anything personal going on in the Sacramento area that you'd like to mention? Well, um, I would just refer people to our website. We also have a Facebook page. Um, there's a number of resources on that, uh, pri- previous uh, talks and interviews such as this. Um, and uh, we have um, plans in the next uh, few months to uh, be involved in other health fairs. We can always use help uh, structuring the organization and building building the organization. We can use uh, financial donations. Um, also, we look for connections, people who have uh, experience working in Cambodia or you know working in this country. Um, certainly, people who speak uh, Cambodian. Um, so you know we can use a lot of help um, and uh, appreciate your having us on your show today. Great, thank you for giving us your time and your energy on this project. So, in closing, I'd like to thank Dr. Jeff Harnden with Insight World Aid for his time and generosity today. And I would ask him to keep up the beautiful work they're doing here and in our local community. That was my interview with Dr. Jeff Harnden. Jeff has played an important part in my uh, individual practice. Um, he's a, a great friend and a devoted practitioner, as well as many others um, in the particular group I belong to. So thank you, Jeff, for that. I would also like to uh, give out the Insight World Aid information again. The email is insightworldaid, all one word, at gmail.com. Their website is Insight World Aid, all one word again, dot O-R-G. Their Facebook is www.facebook.com forward slash Insight World Aid. And they even have a phone number. That would be 650-241-9616. And that is a voicemail. So if you leave your uh, voicemail there, they would return your call. They even have a uh, address, physical address, over in Redwood City. That's 108 Birch Street, Redwood City, California, 94062. And again, thank you, Dr. Harnden, for that um, that nice interview. That was really uh, nice and touching. If you are part of a nonprofit or a support group, be it 12-step or whatever, mental health or whatever you think might benefit those in need, please contact me at papab2010 at gmail.com. Of course, with the nature of 12 steps and support groups, anonymity is respected as well as expected. Um, I don't want people giving out names or uh, whatever. I just want to know how your support group can benefit those who are still suffering. So again, we'll uh, move on here and we'll try and finish up the uh, song from We Are the World. There comes a 
time when we heed a certain call when the world must come together as one there are people dying oh when it's time to lend a hand Big family and the truth, you know, love. 